In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the QCPO framework with background independence. First, I need to load a um, calibrated multispectral image. And here's one I prepared earlier. This image of an oak beauty moth was taken with a camera that's sensitive to the human visible spectrum as well as the ultraviolet spectrum. But this, uh, these modeling tools work with a standard um, visible only camera as well. So here we have the visible red, green and blue channel plus the ultraviolet blue and red channels. You can see I've also already selected regions of interest in this picture. So here we have the moth and we have a background selection, which is uh, an area I've chosen that excludes the moth. Now we need to convert this image to cone catch for the QCPA framework. So to do that, I'll go convert to cone catch and select here the blue tit uh, D65 lighting conditions and remove negative values. Okay. Here the image has been converted to blue tick cone catch quanta. Here we have the long wave channel, the medium wave, short wave, ultraviolet, and double. So these are the double cones, and the QCPA framework always requires, uh, whether it's a dye, tri, or tetrachromat imi image, um, it requires the last slice in the stack to be the luminance channel. And in this case, we're using blue tick vision, and their double cones are thought to be their luminance system, so that's perfect. We can also just check uh, with these red pixels here the negative pixels that we've got and throughout the image the, there are very few and where there are negative pixels they're happening in very dark regions of the image. So that's fine, it probably is just a result of sensor noise. Uh, I've also already had a scale bar selected in this image uh, so it's ready to go for the QCPA framework. To do that I just need to go QCPA run QCPA framework. I'll start by showing the different options um, demonstrating measuring the whole image. Uh, in this example I'll use uh, a Gaussian uh, acuity correction because the Gaussian can deal with uh, um, regions of interest that aren't a rectangular or square shape. Uh, and I'll do the standard uh, RNL ranked filter plus clustering with blue tit Weber fractions uh, and a uh, 0.1 uh, luminance Weber fraction. For now, I'll leave out the particle analysis and local edge intensity analysis. Uh, the acuity of blue tits, uh, to my knowledge, isn't available, but by looking at similar, similar bird species, uh, they potentially have a spatial acuity of around six cycles per degree. It could be, though, anywhere probably between five and 20. Birds like blue tits, they seem to have traded off spatial acuity for temporal acuity, so they can see things very quickly. I'll simulate a viewing distance of half a meter, so that's uh, 500 millimeters, and scale to uh, five pixels per MRA. I'm going to start by showing you the default, which is um, clustering the whole image together. And sometimes it will make sense to measure, uh, in this case, the moth against its background and cluster the moth with its background and in other cases it might make more sense to actually do them independently. So I'll start by showing you uh, what happens when we just um, process the entire image. So here's the, the spatial acuity filtered and here are the uh, RNL ranked filter settings. I'll just choose those. Now it's applying the RNL ranked filter so re uh, reconstituting these sharp edges from the image following acuity correction.
Okay, now that's finished, it's brought up the clustering settings. Uh, and I'll just go with uh, these settings. Uh, so we have the chromatic and uh, achromatic thresholds and all of these uh, default settings here. Okay, that's it, the clustering has finished. And you'll see here the moth has been clustered along with its background. Uh, and I'll go through the results and show what they mean. So here are the cluster results just of the, the last, um, uh, of the entire image. Here are the cluster results broken down by the region of interest. So here we can, if we want to, uh, see all of the clusters in the whole image. So that's this will be all of the clusters. Here are the clusters only present in the moth, and here are the clusters only present in the background. And for each of these, we can see the the, the, the average values and the RNL chromaticity coordinates. Here is the QCPA output results. So here we have the uh, color adjacency analysis, uh, the visual contrast analysis, and boundary strength analysis parameters. And you can see it's measured each of our three regions separately. So we have the whole image, we have the moth on its own, and we have the background region on its own. And each of these have been um, measured on their own, but it's important to note that these have all been clustered together. So for example, if we look at the outline of the moth here, when it's been clustered with its background, there's been lots of overlap between the background and the moth. So for example, we have a bit of apparent continuity here between a region of background and the color in the moth. Um, and sometimes it might be relevant to do that, and, and at other times it won't be relevant to do that. Um, so the alternative is to actually redo this analysis, but uh, separate out the moth from its background so that they can be measured completely independently, and then we won't have any of this color bleeding um, or interaction between the, the moth and its background. So this image just shows the uh, the cluster cluster IDs. Here are the the average values. Here is the RNL uh, processed image, and you'll see that the the ROIs um, originally when we loaded up the ROIs they they were the right scale for this uh, image in the background, which is the full image. After rescaling, the ROIs are rescaled to this image. So here you can see there is the background region and there is the moth region. Okay. So these uh, ROIs have been rescaled. So if, if you look here, if I select the moth and its background, it's actually selecting a region at the top of this image here. So these ROIs have been modified. So I will uh, close the ROI manager and reopen the ROIs. And a, a shortcut for doing that, I could just reopen the multispectral image. A shortcut for doing that is simply taking this zip file uh, and reopening it this way. And you'll see now, if I go back to the cone catch image and select the moth, it selected the moth again. So it's reloaded the, the ROIs that were originally with this calibrated image. Now I'll demonstrate how to run the QCPA framework with background independence. So I'll again go um, QCPA, run QCPA framework, and use all of the same settings here. But in this next dialog box with the Gaussian acuity control, I will here choose to do the moth on its own. Click OK. You can see this has selected the moth, and it's only processing this for the subsequent uh, image processing. And again, I'll choose the same clustering settings. OK, so here we have the cluster results, ROI results, and the summary results for the moth on its own. And I'll leave all of these results windows open. I'll close all of these down. Go back to the original cone catch image. The ROI, again, has been made very small. Uh, 
so I need to reload the ROIs. Now that's done, I can run the QCPA framework again, this time selecting this background region. Now you can see it selected the background and is ignoring the moth. And I can process it with exactly the same settings. And do the clustering. And here we go, it's finished. So if we look at the summary results now, we have the QCPA uh, analysis, uh, so the, the adjacency analysis, the uh, boundary strength analysis, and visual contrast analysis performed completely independently for the moth and its background.